Do you know when we were ruled by the British, we had greater protection of our rights compared to now? Why is this? And why does it matter to you? Well, this is what we are going to talk about today. The slow erosion of our basic rights in the criminal justice system in the last five decades without you noticing it. Hi, I'm M. Ravi and welcome to Ravishan. Having represented many clients as a lawyer for more than 16 years, I've often seen how little the general public know and understand their rights and the limits of those rights under the law. In this video and subsequent ones, we hope to provide you with better knowledge of your rights under the law and explain why, by knowing these rights, you will be better able to protect yourself legally and also why we need reforms. This is the first video in a series which we will be putting out in the coming weeks. So do remember to subscribe to my channel below to get regular updates on topics and issues which affect you. So I was having coffee with a friend who was about to be questioned by the police. I asked him how he was going to handle it and he said, oh, he will exercise his right of silence until he sees his lawyer and obtains his legal advice. Guess what? His jaw dropped to the floor when I told him that the right of silence was abolished by the government in 1976. I also told him that if he didn't answer the questions by the police, his silence will be adversely interpreted against him in a court. It is really troubling to note that many Singaporeans still think that they have a right of silence or right to counsel or, or access to immediate access to lawyer when they are being questioned or arrested by the police can't blame them. You know why? They watch it in the Hollywood movies where the police will inform a suspect of his or her right to remain silent or that they can have their lawyer by their side immediately and they think that it applies in Singapore as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't. In Singapore, in the last 50 years, we have seen certain rights either being abolished or curtailed to the point we no longer know what exactly those rights are even if they still exist. For example, as I mentioned, the right to silence, which we had under the British, was abolished in 1976. If you remain silent when questioned by the police, your silence may in fact be used adversely against you in a court of law. Your immediate access to a lawyer upon arrest has also been curtailed in favour of granting the police priority in its investigation. The constitution guarantees us access to counsel, but the courts have repeatedly decided that this access to counsel can be given within a reasonable time period to be determined by the police. In other words, the police can detain you for an extended period without you being advised by a lawyer as long as it is deemed a reasonable period, although the police may have to explain their reasons in court if asked to do so. Another example. If you signed a statement to the police, the police is not required by law to provide you with a copy of it, i.e. your own signed statement. And if you refuse to sign the statements because you will not be provided a copy of it, you could be charged for not signing the statement. Under our law, you have the right not to incriminate yourself during police interviews or interrogation. It's my experience, however, that few Singaporeans are even aware that they have this right or how to make use of this right. This is especially important as you can be convicted on your statement alone. I repeat, you can be convicted on your confession alone, i.e. your statement to the police. The point I'm trying to make here is that Singapore's criminal justice system is very much based on a crime control model as opposed to the due process fair model. It is very much more based with the repression of crime and removing of legal technicalities which handcuff the police rather than focusing on the fundamental due process of law and giving effect to our constitutional rights. Our rightful concern over reducing crime rates seems to thoroughly overshadow our constitutionally guaranteed rights as individuals. In other words, our criminal justice system is weighted against an individual. Please don't get me wrong. 
The repression of crime is important, but at what cost? At the expense of the rule of law? At the expense of our constitutional and basic rights? So it is indeed time for us to take a deeper look into these issues, for they are important to us as citizens. You know what? Our only protection when we are in legal trouble is to know what our rights are under the law. 54 years ago, we became independent with great hope of self-governance, with attendant rights as a free people. So why do we not have some of these rights, the simple rights today? Rights as those I mentioned above. We had them before under the British. Perhaps it is time to ask, should we not restore these rights to Singaporeans now? In the next video, we delve into the right to silence itself and why it is an important right for us to have and restore. The right of silence is not just a fancy, a frivolous idea. It's in fact a crucial part of the legal process and it is a constitutional right to protect us from incriminating ourselves during police interrogation or interviews. So stay tuned, we will be using some recent cases as examples to understand why this right is important. I have provided some useful links below where you can read up more about these issues. Tell me what you think by posting your comments below. Should our rights be restored? Have you personally encountered an incident where you thought you had certain rights only to find out later that you didn't? Post your comments below and let's have a discussion about it. So remember to subscribe to my channel and also click on the bell to get notification for the next video. Share this video with someone whom you think will benefit from it. Finally, visit my website at mravilaw.com for regular updates. Thank you and see you soon.